For this lesson, we'll be going over PLDs. Now, PLDs are programmable logic devices that are programmable arrays that are structured with AND arrays and OR arrays, creating a sum of product output. In short, instead of using multiple gates, AND gates, OR gates, inverters, and buying multiple IC chips, you can buy a single programmable chip, similar to illustrated below, and program it to your desired needs. As stated on the previous slide, the PLDs are based on the user's needs or program desires. But be aware there are different types of PLDs based on these needs. As you see on the table here, we have the first three are memories, read-only memory, programmable read-only memory, and so on. So we'll go these in more detail in the memory uh, type lesson. However, you need to be aware of there are different types of PLDs out there. However, even though there are several types of PLDs, the structure concept are very similar between each one and we'll go over how those work in the next slide. PLDs have a very simple structure. When coming straight off the shelf or from the factory, they have a blank slate. They are unprogrammed. So, based on the user's requirements, they will have to be programmed before implemented into a circuit. So, the way that you do this, if you look on the illustration to your right, the user programmed or fused connection points for each array. You'll see an AND array, which is AND gates, and then the OR array, which is uh, the OR gate, obviously, at the very end. Each connection point is indicated with, in this case, a red X or a red star. Both mean the exact same thing. And a connection point would actually indicate the input for that array. And we'll go over that in more details in the examples, and we'll show you how it's done. For this problem, we're going to start with a relatively easy circuit. This is a programmable array logic circuit. We have three AND gates and one OR gate, one fixed OR gate. Now, let's see if we can find out the output based on the connection points of our uh, PLD here. So, we're going to do one row at a time. So right now, this first X or connection point, I have a NOT gate or an inverter coming from the B input. So this would be B NOT. Going to the next row, we have the same setup. We have C naught, and again, A naught. And I'm just going row by row, and I'm just logging every connection point. That way, when I go to my AND gates, it makes it easier going down the line. This connection point, I have A, we have B, C, and A naught. And a lot of times you're going to see a lot of repetitiveness, but that's all part of the job. Alright, so right now, I already logged every single connection point on this PLD. Now, let's go to the right and actually input them in our gates. And we'll start with our AND gate. So we have a B naught. Go to the next row, C naught. And then A naught. And actually, we'll keep it simple. There we go. I like to keep it in alphabetical order. Let's go to the next gate, and I'll put it in front here. That way it's a little easier for me to look at it. This row has A, next row has B, and the row after that is C. So with that AND gate, it's A, B, C. All right, last AND gate, we have A naught. So that's A naught, and then we have B. Now for some reason, my handwriting is not grade A today. All right, so we're going to input all these AND gates into this one fixed OR gate. So it will give us a final answer of A not, B not, C not, because we're just following each leg, plus A, B, C. It's real easy. A, B, C, plus A not, B. And without trying to simplify it, that right there will be our final answer. So if you actually converted this into chips and using individual gates, you would use, have to use a, quite a few inverters and a few AND gates and OR gates versus just one PLD uh, chip. All right, let's do another example. All right, for this one we have a very similar example to the previous one, but instead of a programmable Array logic, we have programmable 
logic array, P L A versus a P A L. Just makes it easier if I write it. Very similar setup. The only difference is instead of having individual legs for these gates, it's just one leg. And you're doing the same song, different verse. You're just putting the same inputs into the one gate. So we're going to do the same steps as last time. And I want to go through every connection point and log every single input at these connection points. So we'll start with this one. This one's going to be A. Based on right here, we have A. Going down, B. Same one, C. And then we have D. Okay, very simple. Going down to the next row, and again, I'm doing it one row at a time, one connection point at a time. So we have B not because it's going to the inverter. So this one's going. So this one's going to be B not. Same song, different verse. C not, and then D not. Third row, A not, and D. Fourth row, we have A not. B not, C, and D. All right. So, same thing as last time. We'll take each row and output it to each gate. So I have A, B, C, D going to an AND gate. So that would be my output A, B, C, D. Next AND gate is B not, C not, D not. So I have B not, C not, D not. Excuse my handwriting. Third AND gate, A not, D. Let's see if I can fit all these in here. And then the last AND gate is A not, B not, C, D. So A not, B not, C, D. So now we have every output for all the AND gates. Now we go down to our OR gates, and it's the same thing. Every single branch or every single connection point on this uh, OR gate goes to the output. So go into the connection points, and we'll see if we have enough room down here. We have A, B, C, D, plus. And again, it's a plus because it's an OR gate, and it's based on the connection points. So every connection point will be an OR. So B not, C not, D not. B not, C not, D not, plus A not, D, A not, D. And then the last one is plus A not, B not, C, D. And that's coming from this guy right here. Now, since there's no connection points on these other OR gates, there's nothing coming out of them. They're just unused. So when you come from the factory, you may not use the whole uh, PLD. You may only use uh, half of it or just only a fraction of it. And that's what we did here. For example, we didn't use, use this last uh, AND gate, so we didn't use these last OR gates. So this will be our final answer. For this third example, we went back down to a programmable array logic. But instead of having a pre-programmed PLD, we have a desired output. And this is what we're going to program into our PLD. So we're going to work backwards from what we did last time. So we already know our output because it's A plus BC plus A naught B C naught. So we're going to want to work backwards. Since we have an OR gate here, every single one of these will go to an AND gate. Since we have three branches, that works out. For example, this is going to be A. Next one's going to be BC. And the last one would be A naught B C naught. Because if you had that to your output, it would come out to be the same answer. So working backwards again. So all we need for this first AND gate is an A. Well, I'm just going to do it on the first leg just to keep it easy on me. In fact, let's change colors because now we're doing connection points. So on this first leg, I want A. So following the leg down, we have an input of A. So that's going to be our first connection point. Now, these other ones are going to be on you, so I'm going to just leave them blank. Okay, go into the second row or second AND gate. We have B, C. So for this one, I want B and C. So working back, same thing. There's B for that row. Go into the next one, C. 
and then I have C for that row. Sorry, two AND gates knocked out. Last one. I have A naught, B, C naught. Forgive the handwriting. All right, so let's do A naught. Go into an inverter, A naught, B, connection point, and then C naught. Going from an inverter of C naught, connection point. So if you were programming this, this is how it would look. Very simple. Let's do one more problem. For this last problem, this is going to be our biggest one and probably our most tedious out of all the bunch. This one's a programmable logic array circuit. So in this one, I'm going to work at it from a different angle. Since I have several inputs here and several AND gates and OR gates, I'm going to see what I can do with my inputs. This will be one AND gate, second, third, fourth, this one matches the same as that one, so I can use that over. And then a fifth. So it's going to utilize all five of my AND gates. Do something a little different than last time. I'll tell you what, we're going to change colors. I'm actually going to start from the beginning and then work to the end. Just so to show you that you can work either way that you're comfortable with. So for example, I'm going to do this first one. A naught, B, C naught, D. So A naught. I'm going to start with this first, this is going to be my first uh, AND gate with A naught, B, C naught, D. So, A naught, B, C naught, and then D. So right there on this first AND gate, should come out to be A naught, B, C naught, D. Alright, so that one's done. Let's do the next one, B, C, D. So, B, C, and this is D naught, so. And you don't have to do these all at once, just do it one at a time. Accuracy is better than speed at this point. Okay, next is A, C, that's pretty easy. A, and then C, so A, C is done. And that also knocks out this guy right here because I'm going to use him twice. Next one is C naught D. So C naught D naught. All right. That's that guy. A C D naught. Last one. A C and D naught. So let's go ahead and move all these input, these AND gates. That way it makes it easy for us to track it. So this one I have B, C, D naught. Next one is A, C. Then we have C naught, D naught. And then A, C, D naught. All right. Now we have two different outputs. We have X and Y. So we're going to use two OR gates for this one instead of just the one. Now, this is more practice probably than you need, but it's best to have a, a good understanding of how this works. So, for, this, for X, we're going to need this guy. Then we need B, C, D naught. And we need A, C. So right there, we have our first output already done for X. So let's go to Y, do the same thing. C naught, D naught. C naught, D naught. Then we want AC. Now we're going to use the same AC from the previous one, just like that. Because anytime you have an overlap like that, there's no need for another uh, AND gate. Just use the same one you already used. And then we have AC D naught. AC D naught. So that's going to be our final answer right there if you had to determine your connection points.